ladies and gentlemen, and being a producer of Wrestle Massacre, as well as Inside Movies Galore, I am David Stregi, and welcome to Delusions of Grandeur. Enjoy the reviews. I certainly did. That's it. Screw you and your college flunkies. I've had enough of this from you and from everyone else. I know what you guys are trying to do. Break me down, drive me out of the force. Well, it's gonna take a hell of a lot more than a lame prank like this to get Curtis Mooney to throw in his badge, so fuck you. Over. Did you miss me? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Delusions of Grandeur. I know it's been a while, but I figured I'd go on about my first um, animated film in, in a while that uh, I picked up for a buck uh, at Dollar Tree, uh, uh, Tree recently, and it is called... The Steam Engines of Oz. It was filmed in 2018, uh, put out by Cinediggum, uh, 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 at least distri is, uh, distributed by, but uh, put out by uh, an animated studio called Arcana Studio, Inc., um, which this film is directed by Sean Patrick O'Reilly, and it stars uh, 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 the voices of Ron Perlman, William Shatner, and Julianne Hoff. The story follows a group of characters who seem to run the Engines of Oz, um, which apparently is run by the Tin Man, who is kind of beasted up and apparently has lost his heart and everything. And uh, I believe Victoria is the... Uh, main char uh, character who is voiced by Julianne, uh, uh, Julianne Hoff. And she ends up having a visit from a uh, good witch uh, who has some white flying monkeys, <laughs> which is kind of a, a little bit different. And I guess this uh, particular film is based on the graphic novel of the uh, same name or novel or novels. I have not uh, seen any of these graphic no uh, novels, but this is kind of an interesting take on the uh, the mythology of Oz. Um, I guess there's a munchkin and a brother to the wizard um, involved. Um, a group of lions and so on and so forth. <laughs> and I guess she escapes from the engine of Oz and ends up uh, following, making her way to Munchkinland, I guess. Um, and ultimately, I guess she and her fr uh, friends end up running into a group of lions who at first are against them. Um, but I guess they find out that they're kind of working for the underground and working for the wizard. And the wizard is, in fact, um, the Wizard of Oz, he is voiced by William Shatner. 
And I hate to say this, but William Shatner, you always sound like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> but um, I guess these factions of monk, uh, munchkins and factions of lions get together to with Victoria and the uh, Wizard of Oz with his somewhat unknown brother um, to fight the Tin Man and his armies and uh, to I guess right the wrongs that have been done because uh, as they are going through this land uh, they find that the progress that the Tin Man seemed to think that was going on was more or less taking the surrounding woods and forest and it looked uh, very uh, similar to that which we have done to uh, many forests uh, with our own logging companies and stuff like that so um, I feel like the economy in this land of Oz was more or le uh, less almost per uh, perpendicular to some of the things that we have done in our reality. So I, I did like the look of the lions. They were definitely a little bit more beasted up. Um, I did like the way that the munchkins could actually fly in these, like, steampunk-looking airplane uh, uh, planes and shoot off the uh, these, like, electrodes that um, apparently were, like, almost like the opposite of the emerald the lightsaber or swords that the army of Oz uh, seemed to carry and control. There were definitely some interesting robotic-like um, things that somewhat looked like TikTok. <laughs> um, the army of Oz from like Return to Oz and thing, uh, uh, films of that nature. and It was definitely an, uh, 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 a weird looking Sims-like animation. I'm not sure that the action really was all that great because the, uh, there were some slow motion effects that um, I feel were not as what I think the film was trying to portray. The, uh, uh, like when the Tin Man's uh, axe uh, sideswiped the main li uh, uh, li uh, lion cre uh, creature. Like, it did a slow-mo effect that, that I swear it would have looked better, like, in live action than, than it would in this animation. It's... It looks cool. Um, and... I guess, as far as anything, I wish that, um... I wish some of the, uh, some of the characters of Oz, especially in the end, or uh, as... As you started to see some of them, I had more facial features and were not as stiff as they were looking. I don't know. It, it, it some of it looked well, and some of it just looked like an extended uh, gameplay mode like on a video game or something like that. It was entertaining and uh, 
I did uh, feel like the strongest animated uh, character in here was uh, Victoria. Um, and I think all the other characters surrounding uh, her, uh, her could have needed some more animation work, uh, so to speak. I did like the different areas of Oz that we saw, um, like Munchkin la uh, Land was surrounded by, uh, by like some kind of like moat or th that they had to like walk across. And I did like the weapons and the weaponry that each uh, like the Munchkins had and stuff like that. I do like the uh, the uh, the mythos of the uh, way the Tin Man actually fall uh, fell in love with um, a certain so uh, someone before he was the Tin Man, and uh, the fact that he had kind of lost his heart along the way. And I do like that Victoria was the one that uh, that somewhat like ultimately represented the love that he had lost and the uh, love that he was to gain um, in the whole scenario. And uh, I do think that the film ultimately does have a moral. I think that's kind of what films that deal with the idea and the land and the world of Oz always tend to have like a moral ending. So in a way it's kind of like our modern day a, a, a version of an Aesop's fable. <laughs> you know? But uh, it's just amazing how far the idea of Oz from Frank Albaum has emitted itself through the ages. And uh, this was just another interesting aspect of the world uh, through the eyes of some of the animation cre uh, 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 creators uh, that are out there. And I thought this wasn't a bad representation, especially since uh, William Shatner is involved. Um, I actually saw uh, saw an animation a uh, 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 feature called uh, uh, based on Puss in Boots that the animation just literally just sucked, um, and William Shatner voiced Puss in Boots in there, and it was just horrible. Uh, it, it it was like how, how could you put this together? So this is definitely a step up from that particular film. <laughs> so, but hopefully you enjoyed my review of the film. Um, maybe my view view was somewhat discombobulated and uh, what whatnot. I'm I'm on the fence on this one. I did like the sto uh, a, a story. It was interesting to, uh, to hear. Uh, the voices of Ron Perlman uh, uh, with uh, William Shatner involved, you know, uh, uh, and uh, just hope you get a chance to see uh, see the f uh, film and let me know down in the comments what what you thought of the uh, of the film. Um, but in any case, like, share, and subscribe, and hopefully uh, I'll be back to. Uh, Talk about another uh, uh, film. Didn't mind it. Yeah, I guess I'm just kind of neutral to it. There were things I liked and things I didn't like, and I think uh, everyone's going to have that in a film. But let me know what you thought. Thank you, and enjoy. You were good, kid, real good. But as long as I'm around, you'll always be second best, see?